Welcome into the DMVR Broncos podcast. Uh, I'm Henry Chisholm. I'm joined by Todd Davis. And we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, Zach is out there in Orlando for the owners meetings where we've learned a whole bunch today. We'll get into the Broncos new uniforms that are on the way uh, at some point in the next couple weeks. Um, there's uh, a bunch of updates from Sean Payton about the quarterbacks. And, and Zach is going to call in in about 15 minutes to talk about that. But before he gets here... I want to talk about these rule changes because uh, there's one in particular. I've seen Justin Simmons tweeting about it. Caden Stearns tweeting. Everybody is upset. The NFLPA said they did not want this rule change to go through. That's a hip drop tackle rule. You got some thoughts there, Todd? Uh, I mean, they're just taking away everything we can do to, uh, I guess, tackle somebody, bring bring the football wall, bring the guys to the ground. You know what I'm saying? We're trying not to... Uh, lead with our head and you know what I'm saying take our shoulders out of the head and neck area like we're trying to find all these different ways to get a guy to the ground uh, pause but <laughs> I mean this is just one more you know rule that makes it just harder for us to do our job you know what I'm saying yeah it's pretty Are crazy. Are we playing tackle football or not? We might as well make it two-hand touch at We're this point. We're playing like, tackle football for now. Because you're not even try like the hip drop tackle is not something you're, you think about doing you know what I'm saying, prior to the play or even yeah. as you're tackling. You're just literally trying to... You grab him. Yes, yeah. bring him to the ground. So, it's tough, man. It's tough. And, they, and then they said something like it wasn't going to be called very much this season. But all that makes me feel like is that they're not going to call it maybe throughout the course of the game, but mm -hmm. at a pivotal moment when the offense is about to get stopped, it's a, you know what I'm saying, big play, Kansas City Chiefs, uh. hip tackle, 15-yard penalty, keeps the drive alive. Yep. Um, I don't like it, so... And uh, for the people out there who don't understand what exactly a hip drop tackle is, it's when a defender goes, uh, basically they're usually like running behind the guy with the ball. They grab the runner with both hands or wrap their arms around and then just kind of like drop their weight. And so then you wind up either like twisting or like maybe like landing. The, the, the fear is that you land on a guy's like ankles, blow the knee and kind of trap him and they hurt their ankle or twist their knee or whatever. Um, and, and that is now out of the game it's a 15 yard penalty and automatic first down if somebody tries that so how do we tackle them if we're running behind them we just let them go because you can't horse collar them. i don't exactly that's the thing it's basically just like when they added so the you horse collar did this rule. or you yeah. tried to grab i have no idea like i you grab but you don't tackle like you just try to hold him there so you, somebody can get in front and then no. you get out of the way I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Because but, your momentum is going forward, so I have to try and stop your momentum yeah. and pull you down. So even if you're moving forward and I'm just trying to go forward with you, there's a possibility that I'm dropping my body to do that. Exactly. Is that a hip drop? I guess. Because like if you're running behind and you try to tackle him forward, that doesn't... Like just the way that the angles work, I don't He's even know. Forward. I don't think it's I'm even possible. Yeah, it's physics. It's phys it's, it's physics. Not, it's not happening. Yeah, and um, like I said, the NFLPA said they don't want this rule change to go through, um, which is kind of crazy because they're all about protecting players. You know, like that's the players' union is is the people who control that. So for them to say like, hey, we know that offensive players get hurt this way, but we still don't want this to go through because of what it does to defensive players. And it, it means you basically just can't make a tackle from behind. That's pretty crazy. Like you would think it's, it would be the other way. It'd be the NFL saying like, Hey, we don't want to ban this because we want, we want the game to look clean and fast and people to be able to make tackles. And the players association be like, Hey, this is unsafe. We got to protect our guys here, but it's reversed. I mean, I think they see both sides of the game. So they understand like the bind that's going to put, defensive players in but it also understands like mm -hmm. the safety within offensive players and weighing the two I think they see that it's going to make the game soft I mean Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles after a three step drop and he sprinted forward should that be illegal now too I guess you know what I'm saying like I guess <laughs> anytime somebody gets injured are we just taking out any way that they got injured I mean we're not going to be playing football at, at some point yeah well and Sean Payton actually said 
you know, with all these rule changes, um, he's just concerned about whether they can be officiated. Uh -huh. You know, he's, he's concerned about, like, okay, so we're adding another rule. The refs already can't call the previous rules right. Uh -huh. So now we're just adding even more to their plate. And uh, I, I hate this stuff. Like, we'll, we'll get more into the rule changes. Zach showed up a little bit early, so we're going to get to him in a second. Um, but we'll come back to some of these rule changes because my big takeaway is that it just makes the game so complicated. And it's already a complicated game. Like, you have people who... Like, the, the tweets that the Taylor Swift fans were sending when they're just like, oh, I'm watching football now, and they have no idea what's happening. Uh -huh. You're only making it worse. And it's America, so there's always going to be football fans, and kids are going to be indoctrinated starting when they're two years old. But... At some point, you just got to simplify the game a little bit, and they're kind of going the other direction. Um, but like I said, Zach is here. Um, so uh, let's get to him. Oh, uh, Is he not here? There's I'm Zach. Here. Here, there he boys. is from Orlando. Oh, wow. Where, where are you there? I'm outside. I'm uh, oh. in actually a beautiful spot. I'll, I'll show you guys around. Um, Drinking in the palm trees. We got very like a little, nice uh, play place over here. Oh wow! We got uh, a nice little fountain. Yeah, this is uh, not the worst place to be. I understand you guys got like tons of snow overnight, and I'm just drinking in this like 85 degrees sun and palm trees. Wow, must be nice. Yeah, you going to Disney World? Um, you know. After I win a championship today, I think I'll, I'll go to Disney World. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, Zach is obviously out there in Orlando for the owners' meetings. You've heard from Sean Payton today. You've heard from George Payton. You've heard from Greg Penner. And you've heard from Damani Leach. Is that right? Yes. Yes. The big four of the Broncos we talked to in like four hours. So, it's been a very busy morning, but a lot to take away. And when it comes to football... The two biggest things, are you guys shocked? Surround the quarterback position for the Broncos. And, of course, it starts with what Sean Payton had to say this morning about the quarterback position. A couple of things. The first one, it is very realistic that the Broncos trade up in the draft to get their next quarterback. Um, and it was actually a very inter interesting interaction between Ian Rappaport and Sean Payton. Ian asked if it's possible and realistic that the Broncos trade up in the draft. And Sean Payton said it is realistic. He emphasized that a couple of times, then looked at Ian and said, your report was wrong about like us not trading up. I guess Ian Rappaport said that. Uh, he said it is realistic that we trade up. And then when we talked to, to George Payton later, George said, yeah, if we're all on the same page, we all love someone. Then we will make will make the right moves to move up. But it seems like Sean Payton's a lot more open to it uh, than than George at this point right now. But one of the things George Payton said to us today is that the Broncos he has talked to teams ahead of them. He knows which teams are willing to move up, and then he also knows which teams are willing to or, or that want to move back um, for the Broncos standpoint and what teams would be okay moving back for the Broncos to move up. But one of the teams that Sean Payton, the only team that Sean Payton mentioned when talking about trading up was the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals have the fourth pick in this draft. He said it's a good day to be their general manager of the Cardinals. So that's maybe the spot to keep your eye on because the draft really starts at that fourth pick because it's going to be quarterback one, two, three, maybe there'll be a surprise. Maybe J.J. McCarthy goes in the top three picks instead of it being Drake May. But that fourth pick is where the draft really starts in Sean Payton's opinion. And maybe the Broncos could be in the mix to trade all the way up to that number four spot. And then and speaking of these quarterbacks in the draft, oh, my God, I'm blowing away, guys. Uh, speaking of the quarterbacks. And out of the blue, he unpromptedly said that the team themselves, uh, that they had a private workout with J.J. McCarthy. And this comes, Sean's starting his press conference today by saying, we're not going to talk about individual players when it comes to the draft. And then he went out of his way to say, we had a private meeting and workout that lasted four or five hours with J.J. McCarthy, where not only we put him on the board, but we also... Uh, we're able to lead him through a private workout on the field himself, too. So, of course, unsurprisingly, in a quarterback search, the biggest news is about the quarterbacks. 
Yeah, uh, that's not surprising at all that they're going about that. Did I hear that George Payton also said that they're not totally out of the free agent quarterback market? He did. In fact, not only that, he said it in a much stronger way. Um, He said we were involved in the free agent quarterback market for whatever reason. Um, One player, you know, didn't work out for one reason or the other. And we will still add a veteran free agent. And uh, this today, talking to George, talking to Sean Payton, it really reminded me. This was something I mentioned last week, and I was really reminded of it again today. When the Broncos traded um, for uh, um, Mark Sanchez, butt fumble Mark Sanchez, that's who I'm thinking of. When the Broncos traded for Mark Sanchez back in 2016, John Elway said, don't worry, there's more moves to come at the quarterback spot. That's kind of the messaging that I got today from Sean Payton and George Payton. Like, yes, we do have Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci. We haven't made any moves in free agency. We haven't made a trade. But don't worry, more moves are on the way. And everything is pointing to those moves, the big one being in the draft. After today, I would be shocked if the Broncos don't use their first-round pick on a quarterback. And I'm not convinced it's going to be at that number 12 spot. I do think the Broncos are going to fall in love with someone and they are going to do everything they can in order to get him. And I really think, man, that that number four spot in the draft seems to be open for business. And I think the Broncos, if they do fall in love with someone, will be willing to make that move up to get him. It sounds like J.J. McCarthy is kind of their guy. They keep mentioning him. They can't uh, stop talking about him. Uh, when Sean, you know, Sean's very cerebral, so sometimes he plays mind games, sometimes he plays tricks. Did it feel like he was uh, being truthful about, you know, how much they loved J.J. McCarthy? Or do you feel like there may be, you know, something there to where he's throwing his name out just to go for another player? Yeah, that's a great point, Todd. Like, of course, he doesn't want to come out today and say, my guy is absolutely J.J. McCarthy. So when you do see him go out of his way to talk about one player, you do think, huh. Is this a mind game like you're talking about? Is this smokescreen season? Is this Sean trying to get Bo Nix or Drake May uh, to fall to him and maybe encourage the Vikings who are sitting at 11 to go trade up to get J.J. McCarthy? Putting these things out there, that would be a very Sean Payton thing to do is play this game which does happen in the NFL. And so this is something that we're going to have to piece together. Is their love for J.J. McCarthy or what seems to be their love for J.J. McCarthy? Is it real or is this all part of the game? But I do absolutely think that Sean is falling in love with the quarterback in this draft and there will be a big trade up. Now, you look, Jaden Daniels, I think, is going to go number, number two. Obviously, Caleb Williams, number one. I don't think, when I look at Drake May, I don't think that is a Sean Payton fall-in-love type of quarterback. He's more of the physical tools than the mental tools. And when talking to Sean again, he pointed to it again and just said how important processing is, accuracy, those things. He actually pointed to something that we've had a conversation about, uh, that the combine. He says a lot of people, the combine has changed so much in terms of the way that quarterbacks work out at the combine. Now it's all about seeing who can throw the farthest. He says, that stuff doesn't matter. It's about, uh, you know, the, the five-yard completions. Can you make these quick reads? Can you make these quick decisions? Are you accurate on those? And so to me, and once again, another thing I'm learning from Sean is the physical tools just don't matter nearly as much to him as they do some other people, including John Elway. Paxton Lynch was all about the physical tools. He had every physical tool you could want. He was fast. He was big. He had a strong arm. And, uh, Clearly, that didn't work out. It doesn't mean that the Josh Allens of the world don't work out as well, but that's not what Sean Payton is going to be blown away by in a quarterback. It's about the mental tools and the processing, and that's why having these private workouts is so important. And it was actually kind of funny because we talked to George Payton after Sean Payton, and George goes, yeah, thanks to Sean for telling the world that we met with J.J. McCarthy. And I thought that was a fun little banter coming from uh, the GM. Yeah, Um he, he also talked about trading back, Sean did, um, and, and not deeply, but the quote was something like, everybody says, you know, you guys can just trade back and go get this guy, but we don't necessarily know that we can do that. Right, exactly, and that's why I just absolutely do not think that's going to be the case, especially if it's a quarterback, and I think the Broncos are in a really good spot at number 12. If they don't want a quarterback, they're in a great spot to land a Brock Bowers. I mean, that might be the guy that falls in this draft. But 
it's just hard for me to put myself in that situation where the Broncos aren't going after a quarterback. And that's why I would just be shocked if, one, they traded back to get a quarterback or if they really stay at 12. I think they are going to try to make that jump up. I don't yeah. think that's smoke. I think I think that's reality of what they they want to do and are going to do. Yeah, and I, he also uh, he threw out the, the like only one or two of these quarterbacks are going to wind up being successful. Like sometimes you have a fluky year where it, it's more than that, but they seem to be approaching it that way. That there's one or two, and they're going to find the one or two and do what it takes to get one. That's a hundred percent right. They're not just going to take one of five quarterbacks in the draft, but like we talked about. Just because it's not the first one or two drafted doesn't mean it's not the right one. Lamar Jackson was the fifth quarterback drafted in that draft. Turns out to be um, the best or one of the best of that draft. Two MVPs already. So it's just about identifying the right one and then doing the moves that you need to in order to get them. Because the Ravens, they traded back into the first round in order to get Lamar Jackson. So uh, they did move around in order to get their guy. And I think that's what the Broncos do. And The biggest thing, the biggest little piece of advice from today was Sean went out of his way to talk about J.J. McCarthy, but then Sean went out of his way, unprompted, to talk about that number four overall pick in the draft with the Arizona Cardinals. And he was actually asked by a Washington reporter, do you know if the commanders are interested in trading that pick? And he kind of blew that question off and later circled back around and said that thing about the Cardinals at four. Did they talk about the price for moving up? Because although we have hopes and dreams, aspirations to maybe get the four. If we don't have the draft capital to get the four, how do we get there? Did they talk about that? Yeah, that's something that uh, that Sean said. He doesn't know the price yet, but George did say that he has talked to teams. He kind of has an idea of what it's going to take to get up and move around, and he's already begun that process. There's a lot of talk about the Broncos trading up internally, you got to think that there's a reason there's a lot of talk for that. And then also there's a reason that they weren't willing to give $10 million to Sam Darnold because he wasn't their number one plan. And another little thing from Sean, he was talking about Jordan Love's, he was talking about Jordan Love's development and sitting behind Brett Favre. And essentially what he said was in terms of young guys sitting and learning as opposed to playing and diving in right away. He said, if you're they're in a great situation, then it does make sense for them to sit. Patrick Mahomes with Alex Smith, it made sense. Um, when, when you had Aaron Rodgers behind Brett Favre, Jordan Love behind Aaron Rodgers, then it makes sense for those guys to sit. But essentially, if the Broncos go out and let's say it's Jared Stidham, Ryan Tannehill, and a rookie, Sean Payton's not going to force the rookie to sit just to have the rookie sit. The rookie is going to be playing right away. And with the options that are out there, if the Broncos draft a rookie, I really do think that rookie is starting come week one because Sean again said Jared Stidham is going to be competing to be a starter on this team but we are going to have other people competing with him for the job so it just again once again reminds me Mark Sanchez don't worry we're doing more moves at quarterback oh yeah yeah um maybe the biggest news to fans today is that uh we're getting new uniforms which is something that we kind of anticipated but we got a couple more details right Yes, we absolutely did. New uniforms are on the way. They will be announced in the next couple of weeks. My guess is right before the draft, a week or two before the draft, so that the new Broncos drafted quarterback can be wearing the new uniforms when he's announced to the world. Um, So that's my guess on time. And we know the colors are staying the same and the logo is staying the same. Outside of that, though, they said it's going to be a full redesign. So this isn't just going to be a little tweak, but colors stay in the same, and the logo is going to stay the same, and they are going to have options for alternate helmets as well. So I expect it to be very different, and um, they want it to be very different. They said it's going to incorporate parts of Colorado, aspects of Colorado. So maybe we're looking at the mountains being part of it, um, but it's going to be a very different look from the Broncos here. And they actually started this process of getting new uniforms January of 2023 is when they went down to Nike, talked to Nike, talked to the league to get this thing rolling, and there will be new uniforms for this coming season. I'm a little nervous. I'm excited, yeah. but I'm nervous. Because I'm wondering, like, <laughs> you know, who's designing these? Who has the swag to put together a nice yeah. uni? You know what I'm saying? Nike hasn't Not made anybody a good just, uniform in, like, a decade. You know, you need some help. For yeah. any sport either. Not yeah, no, just, Nike, yeah. Nike isn't good at uniforms. They, I mean... 
Like all those city edition NBA. They used to be. That's they used thing. to be really nice. Like Oregon, all the Oregon oh, stuff yeah. was crazy. Back in the day, but they have been cold for years. I mean, you look at every NFL rebrand, they've basically been bad. And every NBA uniform they put out, they're like 90% of them are just awful. Yeah, and it's too important to the fans to have yep. great uni. So it's a I'm big nervous. one. I'm, I'm really got my fingers crossed with this one. And Todd, it sounds like you want to be part of uh, the team to, to put the finishing touches on. Um, and what's interesting, they did say that they got players input, mainly the captains from last season, to help uh, not necessarily design, but get input on the uniform. Oh, exactly, that, exactly. I, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Threw them on the way who, out. Who, who, who's helping you do this? Pat Sertan, I guess? Our guy, maybe we get a little insight from him. But Justin Simmons, gone. Russell Wilson. Gone. So I, I don't know who these captains are that helped them put it together, but maybe they'll just blame those guys if the fans don't like. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess anything else you, you feel like is big news here before we let you go, Zach? Yeah, let's think. I mean, trying to process like over an hour of conversations um, that we had. It's all about the quarterback guys. And interestingly enough, George and Sean and Greg actually all talked about the really good relationship that George and Sean Payton have together, but they all talked about Cody, um, Cody Ray, Rager. No, it's not Rager. It's Rager. They talked about know. him, the new guy that they hired from the New Orleans Saints to be part of the player personnel. Sean said he was the best college evaluator in New Orleans when he was there. It sounds like a guy that if George Payton doesn't work out, that they would just promote from within to be the GM. Sean said that any time in day three, he would go to him and make sure that he had watched a player that they were going to select and make sure that he liked him. So that's a big change and a big addition in Sean Payton's eyes. And it's just something to keep your eye on moving forward. An up-and-coming guy that, that Sean Payton really likes. Wow. Very cool. All right. Uh, we'll let you go. Thanks, Zach. Right, I mean, I'll, I'll so, one more question, actually. So, you're going to be calling back in tomorrow, right? Let's do it. What what's what's going to be new between now and tomorrow? What should we be excited for? Uh, it's a good question. Tonight, there's a little uh, mixer. So, let's see if I can uh, pull some things out of this mixer tonight. That's typically where the good, juicy stuff comes from, anyways. <laughs> okay. There it is. Well, have have fun mixing, Zach, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, see you, fellas. Oh, okay. A lot of stuff there. Also, um, I'm 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 really hoping that this just turns out to be Garrett Bowles designs the the new interview <laughs> or new uniforms. We can really see how that goes. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm unsure. I think you look online. There are variations of designs that people have made. Some are good, some are bad. I'm really hoping for the best because uh, good unis, man. I think you play better in good unis absolutely you know what i'm saying i think you feel the swag of the uniform you know whether it's uh the all orange the orange crush unis or we get the white helmets it just adds a different you know swag to that game so it's important man we got to be out there look good feel good play good 100 percent, yeah and i'm i'm actually really nervous about this because mm-hmm. again like i i nike has done a terrible job and like i'm a nike guy like i only buy nike shoes like Half the things that I own are from Nike. But when it comes to uniform designs, it's been like the last 10 years or so, they've totally fallen off. Mm. Like, you look at all these NBA uniforms they make, and they're terrible. Mm. Like, they're terrible. Like, uh, I can't even think of, like, the worst one. Like, the Cream City Milwaukee jerseys. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many of those. They're just terrible. And the NFL ones have been bad, too. Dang. Dang, I'm trying. Once he said the mountains were incorporated, that really got my head spinning. Like, what? I know. <laughs> Where are we putting the mountains on these jerseys, guys? Like, Our jerseys. What's it's going the, on? Exactly. Dude, it's the Denver Broncos, not the Colorado Broncos. Denver has no mountains right here. Like, uh-huh. I don't. I never get the mountain incorporation. It's so. Well, weird I mean, me. the Rockies are so close. I, you know what I'm saying? They're right there. Within I, sight. I still don't think it's like. Again, I I'm not a mountain guy when it comes to uniforms. I think so you're not a mountain guy when it the, comes to uniforms. I, I think the only that. place you can put them is like maybe on the shoulder, like on the shoulder right here. That's where they're like gonna coming be. Up could that's only where, be the place. That's where gonna. The, that's where they're gonna be, and we're gonna all hate it. Just watch. Hey. Yeah. Well, um, it's a shame we can't make bets on these new uniforms because uh, if we could, Bet365 would be the spot to do it. Um, Bet365 is awesome. Um, 
they uh, we've actually made a decent amount of money. A lot of my money I made this weekend wasn't from the college basketball because we did the thing where we bet every underdog. And, uh, you know, it, it was awesome the first couple days. Then more recently, it hasn't been so awesome. Um, so I, that part was a little tough. Luckily, I bet on the Avs multiple times yesterday. Um, so that was awesome because they were down three zip and they came back and I won a bunch of money off of that and the CU women's team. So bet three, six, five has been a very important part of my life over these past few (laughs) days. And, uh, I don't see that ending anytime soon. Uh, so if you haven't signed up yet, make sure you get over there because, um, they've got a whole bunch of different perks. Um, three times this season, the nuggets have led by 20 or more, and you've just automatically won because that's what happens at, uh, at Bet365. They just give you that early payout. Same thing with some of these uh, these college games this week. They've got all those early payouts. Um, they've got over 10,000 boosts per month. And there's uh, two, two offers for new customers. Use the code DMVR365 when you sign up. Uh, the first is a bet and get offer. You place a bet of $5 or more and get $150 in bonus bets. Or you can get the first bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to $1,000. And if your qualifying bet loses, you receive a matched refund in bonus bets. Uh, whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary. Bet 365. Must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. And shout out to our friends over at Coors Light, uh, the only beer that's made to chill. Whether you're chilling at home, watching some March Madness, um, just hanging out with some family, Coors Light is the perfect beer for you. And we talked about mountains earlier. That's mm-hmm. how you know that Coors Light is ready. When the mountains turn blue, you know it is time to chill. So when it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer that I reach for. So when you want to hit a reset, grab a beer that is made to chill. You can get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com forward slash DMVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Awesome. Um, let's see. Let's jump back into uh, to these rules. Let's do the rules next, and then we'll get more into some of these Broncos things. Uh, hip drop, terrible. Um, the other, there are two others that passed. One's kind of like a, a an unimportant rule, uh, where essentially, if there's a turnover, but there was a personal foul on the offense before the turnover, you still get your 15 yards after the turnover. Because before there was some confusion, and there's something about they cancel. Point is, that one should rarely come up, and you won't even notice that the rule changed. Uh, One of these I like, though, and that is this. If an official makes a call, or I'm pretty sure doesn't make a call, on an intentional grounding or roughing the passer, the replay official, the guy up in the booth, can overturn that call. So it has to be a situation where it's like kind of a tangible result. It has to be objective. It can't be anything subjective. So, for example, the roughing the passer... If the passer gets hit in the head, that's something that the the guy in the booth can call down and say, he did get hit in the head or he didn't get hit in the head. So you should see those be correct more often. And same thing on intentional grounding, which I'd imagine is like the ball getting back to the line of scrimmage is reviewable. Maybe they can review the tackle box since that's pretty objective. Um, personally, I love that they're taking a little bit more of the game out of the official's hands and giving it to somebody who just has much better angles on those calls. Just get to another official. Yeah, We're all in the same family. It's true, but at least it's an official with like multiple Different views who can angles. zoom in. Yeah, they get to see it twice if they need to. Oh my gosh, I just feel like that's going to make they're just going to be zooming in on every time we're rushing the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be nicking his helmet with fingernails. That's true. <laughs> or fingertips. And they're going to be like, oh, we saw it on the Zoom. Uh, yeah, that's, you know what I'm saying? Roughing the passer. Um, you know, every time I think about new rules in the league, I always think about the offensive advantage that they're about to give yep. to the team. So I never feel like they're doing this for a defense uh, to help the defense out. So I always start thinking about, like, I guess the worst case scenario. There is one that is proposed. And, and so... There are a few rules that went through today, but there's some other rules that they're still going to vote on. Uh, I think they're all getting voted on tomorrow. One of those is an expanded crackback block rule. Um, And so under the current rule, if there's a receiver... uh, In the box? Yeah, so it has to be moving toward the middle of the... No. Yeah, he has to be moving toward the middle of the field for it to be considered a crackback, right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. But now they're expanding it um, to players who go in motion and move beyond the center and block a defender below the knee. So they, if you pull somebody around and then make the crack back kind of on the on the edge, chop block. Yeah, that is now 
in the, if it, if the vote goes through, that would be a penalty. So I thought you could already not. You're saying you couldn't chop. You can't already chop outside the box. You have to be in the interior to be able to chop. So you're saying that now, yes. if you're in the box with motion, jet motion, that jet motion guy cannot go down and cut your defensive end on the outside. That's my understanding. Smart rule. Yeah. Saves guys' knees. I think that should have been in if we're talking about hip tackles and stuff. <laughs> exactly. A wide exactly. receiver running full speed at your knees is probably high on the list for player safety. It, absolutely. Yeah, so there is that one. Um, there's one other rule that did go through, and that is that uh, you now get... a. Th- so, so right now you get the two challenges. Mm-hmm. If you get them both right, you get a third challenge. Mm-hmm. They passed the rule that says you only need to get one of the first two right to get your third challenge. So you get to makes it more likely a team gets another review at the end. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessary. I think it's I think it's kind of fun getting to the end of the game and a coach messed up and challenged something he shouldn't have. Like, yeah. And now you don't have another you know challenge to use. I, I kind of like that aspect of the game. Yeah, I kind of agree that that is fun. I'll, there's also so many missed calls uh-huh. that I'd rather fix the missed calls. But I do agree that that aspect is kind of nice where it just takes some of the gamesmanship out. Mm-hmm. Like that's the part of being a head coach that everybody at home gets to sit at home and critique. You know, yeah. it's like there's so much of it that's like, oh, I think we need to leave a day early for the trip to Buffalo because it's so far away. And, and those are all like the decisions that probably really do matter behind the scenes. And there's so many of those that go every single day and nobody ever knows. But like the game day coaching is something that we all see and we've all seen for so long. And so it makes it really fun to critique those ones when a coach screws something up right there. Yeah. Because you think about it like right after the play, like they're talking to you upstairs. Yep. But they're also getting back on the ball. Like Mm -hmm. you got to make a split decision because if you blow this one, you may, you know, you'll only have one more versus now you're like, just throw it. Might as well. Because if we get the if it if it's wrong, we can get the next one right and we'll get another one. Like it just I feel like it takes a little bit of the hesitation and the, you know, because yeah. I think they're hesitant to throw it at first because you need those. If 100%. you don't get it right, then it's like a you know a big deal. Totally. Now not so much. Yeah. Um okay, a couple more votes that are coming in tomorrow. Um they're gonna vote on whether you can review an expired play clock, which is nice. Hits zero, they can just go back and check and see if they got the play clock off in time. Um, moving the trade deadline from week eight to week 10, they'll be voting on. I, I don't have strong feelings. I do think like, I, it, it, I, I like that teams, if they really want to tank, they have to decide early. Uh-huh. Like, I don't like the idea that you can be like, Oh, we just, Oh, we were, we were three and five at that point. It's like, should we keep pushing? Should we not? Ah, oh, we might as well just keep trying. But then now it'll be, oh, well, you just lost the last two games and you're at three and seven. Sure, yeah, let's get rid of our good players. I think that you see just a little bit too much there, mm-hmm. uh, too many transactions, but people love trades, and it gets clicks, and it's a lot of fun, so I see why they do it. Um, also, the big one, actually two kind of big ones, um, and th- I might as well hit this too. Uh, the Colts are submitting a rule change that would permit a coach or replay official, uh, if it's inside of two minutes, to challenge any foul that has been called. You could challenge any penalty. I kind of like that. I kind of like it too. Because there's there's so much that happens in that two minutes mm-hmm. that um, could change the entire outcome of a game. Yep. Whether it's OPI, DPI, uh, roughing the passer, I think all those are like game-changing plays. Even now, this hip tackle thing, Yep. you might be able to challenge that, see if 100%. you really did hip tackle them. Might be hard to overturn, overturn but... Those are crucial moments in the game, especially yep. in the NFL. Every game is really close, so if the, you can really challenge in those moments, any call, holding. Yeah. So the coach, I wonder, so it has to be called, though, and so then you can challenge it. It's kind of unclear here, but, it would, like, the booth can review anything inside of 10 minutes or inside two minutes. The coach can review any foul. Oh, it says to challenge any foul that has been called. Okay. Has so called. You, you can say, no, this didn't happen, I guess. Okay. And I think the, the concern would be that it would slow the game down because there'd be more reviews. You still can only review three things, Mm -hmm. you know, like you can only review three times throughout the game. So it really isn't that big of a deal. Um, Plus, nobody likes when penalties are wrong. You know, in in baseball, like I kind of get the umpire has his own strike zone. You kind of feel it out and they make mistakes. But like, oh, it's kind of an expanded strike zone up at the top. Like he's given he's given some space up there. There is some of that that's kind of nice in baseball. In football, you just got to get the calls right. Holding is holding. And it's just been so bad for so long that 
allowing teams to review them, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, the Eagles submitted the proposal to, uh, instead of an onside kick, you can have a fourth and 20 from uh, your own 20 yard line instead of trying the onside kick. So you score the touchdown, kick the field goal. You can take the ball at your own 20, fourth and 20 if you want to. And that, and if you get it, it's a touchdown? If, if you get it, then you just get to keep going from there. You can just take possession. But a fourth and 20 on your own 20, that means you have to score a touchdown or not. Right? Oh, no, no, no. Like your defensive 20. Okay, okay. So you got 80 yards to go. Uh, no, onside I kick. Just kick the onside kick. Yeah. I agree. You're, it's just getting too gimmicky. And then the, the big one, the kickoff rule, which they'll vote on tomorrow. So I think this was like in the XFL before. This was the XFL rule that they're thinking about stealing. And the way it works is you kick from the same spot. The kicker kicks from your own 35-yard line. Um, but the kick team, the other 10 guys, line up at the 40 across midfield. So they're got, they've got a 25-yard head start. Um, the nine players or nine of the players from the return team start between the 30 and the 35. So five to 10 yards away from the kick team. Um, the other two guys get to line up deep to go catch the kick. Um, if the kicker doesn't get the ball to the 20 yard line or it goes out of bounds, the return team gets the ball at the 40 yard line. If they, the kick lands between the 20 yard line and the end zone, then you have to return it. There's no more fair catch in play. You have to return. Um, if the ball bounces in the end zone, you can take the touchback. Touchback only takes you to the 20, though. So you basically want to return that. Um, if the kick lands in the end zone, then you have two choices. You can either return it, or if you kneel, then you get the ball at the 30-yard line. Also, there are no onside, or onside kicks are only allowed in the fourth. But you have to, you have to line up differently for onside so kicks. onside kicks you would line up how you currently line up so then everybody knows exactly so the surprise, no surprise onside kick no. is gone and i feel like <laughs> truthfully you know from playing special teams in the nfl like 80 percent of the kicks are touchbacks like we're talking exactly. about a small major minority so, of kicks so that's what they're trying to get rid of is they're trying to get rid of the touchbacks they're saying if you kick it in the end zone this touchback now takes you to the 30 and so instead the 25 of 25 is already you guys already moved it from the 20 to the 25. Like, it's true. come on. Yeah. It's not just, let's just kick the ball off. It's good. Do the nice yep. flyover. And you know what I'm saying? Know, Get some it's... energy. Everybody stands up, kick it <laughs> off, and let the offense run out there. Like, it doesn't have yeah. to be like this big momentous play every time I like somebody that. kicks it off. It's Yeah, the kickoff isn't about being like a, an important play in the football game. It's just about the vibes. Yeah, it's I like, think it's good. The game vibes. is starting. Every, let's line up for the kickoff. Yep. Everybody does. Oh, oof, and he kicks it and then exactly. it goes to the end zone. And yeah, and then, then, some, and then, then, then when it does happen, out there. and then when it does happen, you're like, oh, you know what I'm saying? You get like oh, excited. No you know yeah, exactly. Saying? Yeah. No, I do. I miss the days when kickoffs were fun because I mean that was like up until ten years ago, maybe 15, 15 years ago for sure. They were still super fun, but now we've hit the point. I think this year was the fewest kick returns there ever been yeah like they nobody returns it anymore because you can just take the ball at the 25 um but back in the day that was the best play in football there was nothing better especially if you were like a bears fan or watching a bears game and it's devin hester back there yeah the chiefs had those return guys like uh who was that receiver dante hall, hall. yeah dante hall was so sick yeah. i mean hate him and all that sort of stuff but like whenever he got the ball you're just like i have to watch this and the Bronx have had theirs too i mean it yeah, Trendon Holiday had like the the big punt return. Or no, he had a kick return in that run too, didn't he? Yeah, the kick the Panthers. Uh, no, he did one against the Panthers a couple years before the Super Bowl. That's okay. Yeah. See, but there was that. I mean, Eddie Royal was awesome. But those were the best plays. Like when you're kids, like the kick returns, kick returners were the awesome players because they just like find gaps. So I like the idea of trying to get. I don't know. Really? I feel like it was those Devin plays. Hester. Yeah, but Devin Hester, you wouldn't put Devin Hester over any. Uh, DT bomb or any Emmanuel no, Sanders but, going deep for seventy. You're like you're not picking. There's just like a level of cool to it, though. It is cool. It's almost. It's, I it's wouldn't almost, say it was the best. I, not the. I think it was top tier. But I think TD breaking a touchdown run. Yeah, was dope too. Like I it can't just dope. say like the returners were better I when they went the crazy returns. over anybody else. I love the kick returns. Um, I like the. Uh, I think that if you want more kick returns. Just go back to the rules that meant that like wedges. plays return. Yeah, like the wedges would be a big one. But also, like instead of kicking for the thirty-five, go back to kicking from the thirty. Uh huh. There you go. Instead of giving the touchback to the twenty-five, give it to the twenty. Makes teams want to return it more. I think like, that's right. If you want more returns, there's ways to do it, and it's just to get rid of all the rule changes they made the past ten years. Yeah. 
So I don't know that we need this whole gimmicky like nine step process for kickoffs when you can just yeah I said chief sorry guys um the when you can just say like we we know a way that was awesome before and just go back to that and everybody loved it and it was such a cool part of the game too yeah like ah uh, like Deshaun Jackson. Like, uh, there are just so many cool moments. Okay, so those those are the rule changes. Uh, we'll we'll touch on t- some tomorrow because a couple of these will probably go through. Um, before we kind of wrap up the Broncos stuff, though, uh, want to give a shout out to our friends over at Volo Sports. Oh, we actually just had the Volo crew in here recently. Um, like the the guy, the people who are like running Volo, not the the leagues that have been through here. Because we we used to have like leagues that come through. I think we're kind of in the in-between season. I guess it's winter, but there was there was one league that was I think it was kickball and flip cup. And so there would be like two kickball teams. You guys know kickball where, you know, they, they just go and play each other down at City Park. And then after the game, they all come over to the DMVR bar and play a game of flip cup. So in the standings, it counts as one point for the game of kickball and one point for the game of uh, flip cup and I think it, maybe they rotate drinking games. I think it was just flip cup. Um, but there's so many awesome leagues like that that you guys can join. Um, we're big fans here at DMVR. A bunch of us play. Um, it's also just w- when you get to a certain age, staying in shape means like you either go to the gym or you're just not in shape. Like, <laughs> and, and that's not like a super fun way. So it's good to be able to just go and be like, yeah, I'm just going to go play some basketball because it's a, a nice healthy thing to do um so volo is awesome um they also like donate a portion of uh like their proceeds to help kids play uh for free um which is a really cool thing that they do um you could sign up for the modern day sport and social club it's only 20 dollars a month um there's it includes league discounts. They're up to $50, unlimited access to pick up and drop-ins, all that sort of stuff. Sign up for your Volo Pass, the code DNVR3, and uh, you can you can play for only $10 per month for the first three months. It's an awesome program. Join them, and they'll help the kids, too. A shout-out to Game Time. You know we love Game Time here. They're the best for helping you find tickets and deals, and they always got you covered whether you want to see some March Madness, uh, see the Nuggets ball out, see the Avalanche, mm-hmm. uh, see the Broncos, New Jersey's next year. You definitely want to check in <laughs> with game time and they'll keep you covered. Uh, they have a couple good offers that they do, uh, like prior- priority. You have last minute deals. You can save up to 60 percent off buying last minutes for sports, comedies, concerts, theaters, etc. You got flash deals or zone deals, which help save you money based off the seats you choose. Uh, they also have in- all in pricing. So you don't have to worry about once you get to your cart. All the fees that are incurred or what's what's next to come up. You know exactly what you're playing yep. for. Uh, they have the lowest price guarantee. Um, Game time will credit you 110 percent of your purchase if you find the same seat, same row for a cheaper price. So they take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. You can download Game Time app, create an account and use code DMVR for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code DMVR for twenty dollars off. Yeah. Nuggets are here tonight playing Memphis. First of all, it's going to be kind of cheap because it's Memphis, but also because of the bad weather. Like I think including fees, you can get lower level for 75 bucks, and that's just going to keep going down all day. So That's great. Big day for it. Um, Broncos stuff. I think Zach hit on a bunch of it, um, but there were some other little things in there that I kind of liked. Uh, talked about Malka Broach, the new defensive lineman. Uh, mentioned versatility up front Uh that's like one of the keys there he's a guy who can play nose tackle he can play a three technique and he can kind of just eat up snaps for him you know you can trust him to go in there for 30 35 snaps and not really be an issue Uh which is something that they were lacking last year and so although for like a backup i guess for the broncos he's probably a starter but rotational defensive lineman four million bucks a year is a little bit on the pricey side but when your problem is you just don't have enough guys who can go in there without causing problems Having somebody who can eat 35 snaps a game, that's a nice piece to have. No, he's a good player. I think he's going to be solid for him. Um, it's funny, like, how much things are, like, skewed because you got a guy that's actually going to be playing snaps on the football field, and he's making $4 million, and he's <laughs> pricey. But you got quarterbacks making 8 to 10 who will never take a snap through the season. Starting quarterbacks that are making 10 to 12 <laughs> times yeah. what this guy is making, like, it's crazy. It's crazy how much things are skewed, uh, you know, in football. Yep. Everybody's playing, but everybody's not getting paid the same. Yeah. Um, Brandon Jones, I mean, no surprise that they like him. Yep. 
um, because he was he was their first free agent signing, right? I think he was first. Um, so the fact that he was out there or, or that they went and got him quickly, yep. um, I think, first of all, kind of surprised some people. Um, also, like the price tag, $7 million bucks. I mean, again, maybe not that big compared <laughs> to some other things they spend money on. But with all the safeties on the market to go grab him instead of waiting for guys to to kind of shift sift their way through and see where the deals are. And first of all, it's kind of a sign that they like him. But then, you know, George Payton said today that before his knee injury in 2022, he was playing at an elite level. Mm -hmm. Not just like he was good. They watched that tape and said, this can be an elite player. They also said that they aren't worried so much about the free safety, strong safety designation. It's more about the right safety, left safety designation because Mm -hmm. of the way that they just kind of rotate guys down, which is interesting because I think of that as more of like a Fangio thing than than like, advanced Joseph thing, but I guess maybe that does kind of translate to, to this scheme as well. Maybe so. Like, cause we talked about, it. I think these guys, both of them could do uh, kind of both roles at different Definitely. times. Um, they have different strengths, but you know, when you have two guys that can play both, I think you're not, you're less worried about who's at free and who's mm-hmm. at uh, strong. I always like a designated free state safety and the designated strong safety, because for me it's, a little bit of different body types. Yes. Like TJ Ward and Justin Simmons are different body Very types. Different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Their their uh, attitude toward the game is different. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to come and sometimes get in the box, play like a linebacker at times. You got to cover, you know, tight ends. I think it's just different. But that's just my preference. But I think both of those guys could play strong safety. So I understand why, you know, they're taking a little bit of different approach to this. Yeah, 100%. And It is interesting because it's like uh, Justin Simmons isn't really much of like a hitter, Uh but it's not because he come down to make a tackle. He can't exactly come down and get you. But it's just different because when you're six foot three and like you've got these long arms and legs, it's just different than a TJ Ward who's just built to hit people, Mm -hmm. you know. And so like Justin maximizes what he has, and he obviously wouldn't trade that height and the long arm and those sorts of things to be smaller so he could hit better. Like that's why he leads the league in interception since he joined the NFL. But it, it, it is like a different body type. And it's like Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas. Exactly. Like very different. Body <laughs> exactly. Types. But like I, I get, I, I see it both ways where having somebody who can play both roles is obviously valuable because you can disguise your coverages more because you don't know who's going to be coming down in the box. You don't uh-huh. know who's sitting deep. You know, you can rotate late and you can rotate from the other side and it confuses quarterbacks. At the same time, though, having somebody who's specialized and somebody who's really good at just playing in the box and have him do what he's best at over and over and over again in the long run seems like it might work out. So kind of interesting to see how they're taking that approach. Um, mention the injuries because um, they they changed up so much of the strength staff, the health staff, Um they were second in most metrics, you know, games lost to injury, that sort of stuff. In most injuries, uh, most injured team, the second most injured team in 2022. This year, they were 31st, near the bottom. And Sean actually said, uh, we would have been 32nd. We would have been the healthiest team in the NFL if Javante hadn't run over his right tackle and forced Mike McGlinchey to miss the last game, mm. which I thought was kind of funny. They just go up and say that. I think it also means he likes Javante. Because uh-huh. you, don't, you don't call somebody out for doing that if he's somebody who's like, I hate him, he's on the ball. Like, in that case, he's just, like, out. Like, you're just, like, steaming over. The fact that you make a joke out of it, yeah, it was it's a, a good thing. Yeah. yeah he, he has a uh, soft spot for Javante, for sure. 100%. Um, but that is something we haven't really talked about, is that they were just that healthy all season. And I guess you can kind of look at that as, like, a downside when you only win seven games dis- or eight games despite being the healthiest <laughs> team in the, the NFL, healthy, second healthiest. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mentioned the centers, said that they wanted to keep Lloyd Cushenberry. Um, but because they have Alex Forsyth and Luke Wattenberg, that they didn't have, they didn't feel like they had to overextend themselves and pay a bunch of money to bring him back. Very, very complimentary of Lloyd Cushenberry. Um, said, like, very happy that he got the money he did. Same thing with Jerry Judy. He said, like, Sean said, I like Jerry. Me and Jerry have a great relationship. Um, I'm thrilled that he got that contract that he got. Like yeah. he deserves it. It's great for him. Um, but because you have both of those two, that's why you feel safe because you kind of have two swings at it there. And he says both smart guys, very athletic players as well. Yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, I think that that's uh Oh, one more thing here. Uh, 
the he was asked how they can improve the offense. He said there are two pieces. The first, fewer sacks. Maybe uh, pointing the finger at Russ a little bit there. And second, uh, be more efficient in the running game. Mm-hmm. Get those average up. And I, I agree. But just kind of interesting to hear that that's where he thinks the growth needs to come from. Yeah, because I think he's I think he's thinking about uh, a rookie quarterback, and the best thing you could do for a rookie quarterback is have a strong running game and good protection. Yeah. So it, it would suck for a rookie quarterback to come in here and feel like it was all on him, and he it was him that had to put the team on his shoulders every game. Uh, they need to take some pressure off of him, so that that means having a strong running game and you know good protection. So yes, yes. Um, all right, uh, before we finish things off by hitting our bracket, we've got a, another little matchup who the Broncos should draft today. Uh, Want to give a reminder to you guys to become a diehard with DMVR. There's a whole bunch of perks. You get discounts on all of our events. You get discounts at the bar. Um, the membership can pay for itself really quickly. You get a free shirt when you sign up and a free shirt every year you renew. There's so many different reasons. Um, I'm a little biased, but I would say so that you could read the list of guys who I would consider drafting um, that I put out last night. Or Sorry, not drafting. Um, adding in free agency last night. Uh, I threw LaVisca Chenault in there. I'm, I'm not going to give away all five, but I'll say that that's one of them. Um, I think that that would be a lot of fun because he does his best work from the slot. He's like the chess piece. He's never really gotten the opportunity where you're like, an offensive coordinator has moved him into the backfield, you know, put him back there with Jaleel and then flex Jaleel out. There's just so many different pieces, so many different ways you can use him um, that I think it could be a lot of fun because he's built like a running back. I've pitched so well with Sean Payton. So that's one of the guys, if you guys remember, you can go read who the other four are. Um, so go check that out and uh, become a diehard with us at DMVR. And a huge shout out to Illegal Pete's. Um, really, really fantastic food over at Illegal Pete's. What is burritos? Uh, their chips and salsa, chips and guac, mm. tacos. Um, you really can't go wrong with whatever you choose off their menu. You're going to love it. And this episode is brought to you by Illegal Pete's. Uh, the Wheat Ridge, Colorado location uh, now is open, so make sure you go check them out. And they also have the Gold's location is open. You can swing by and join the festivities with live music, endless margaritas, and, of course, all your favorite Burrito Fixins located in the Gold's Marketplace on the corner of 26th and Kipling, overlooking Crown Hill Park in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Go check them out. Uh, you're going to love your illegal peats. Tell them DMVR sent you and enjoy your meal. Awesome. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap things up here by hitting our bracket. Um, I guess I haven't gone back and checked who won this uh, this last round. Brock Bowers won over uh, over Michael wow. Peck Jr. That's an upset. Wow. You okay, Todd? Haters. No, hey. fine. <laughs> All right. Um, this time we've got Joe Alt, the left tackle from Notre Dame, versus Jared Verse, the edge rusher from Florida State. Um, to me, this one's pretty easy. Joe Alt's the best tackle in this draft. Yep. He's one of the very best players in this draft. I think that, you know, I, I, Marvin Harrison Jr. is in front of him in terms of position players, uh, non quarterback. But after that, I think Joe Walt's second. He's a freak. He's what, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, he moves incredibly well. He's obviously productive in college. Um, still young. Great athlete. Strong. Like, just has everything that you could ask for. And even going all the way down to, like, he's from Notre Dame, which puts out great offensive linemen mm-hmm. every single year. You know, Quentin Nelson being kind of the, the big star from that group. Um, but, yeah, to me, this is Joe Walt. Yeah, I was going back and forth because I feel like um, Joe All is the better player. Mm -hmm. But Joe All also means that we have to move on from Garrett Bowles. Yeah. Um, And then Jared Verse is probably the biggest addition that we would need as a team. True. Because, of course, I feel like Joe All is going to be a good player, but I don't think he'll be better than – I don't think, though, he'll be better than Garrett Bowles in year maybe six. Yeah. As y'all in year one, whereas Jared Verse is somebody that we could plug and play right now that could help us. Mm-hmm. And from what we need as a team, I think outside linebackers is a position that we could use one more guy to come and shore up that team, uh, shore up that unit. So I think I went Jared Verse on this one. Okay. Uh, I know it's not the most popular decision, but I think for where the team stands right now, he would be the biggest benefit. Yeah, somebody – it's just weird how you go through this entire process. Like, I remember Jared Verse – it would have been back when I was still covering Colorado. 
he was in the portal leaving Albany, um, like University of Albany, FCS school, yep. where he was dominant, as you'd expect. And him being one of those big targets in the portal, it's like, I don't think that Colorado can land him, but Colorado was very much in that conversation. Like, can, can they go get this guy? Because he seems like a freak. And so having followed him since back then, you just look at him so many different ways. Just a couple days ago, I saw somebody put together a video of him on plays where he wasn't super successful. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't like the sacks, it wasn't the hits or anything, but it was just a montage of him being dominant or like pushing a guy backwards mm -hmm. or like getting by a guy, swing a guy. But it's just every single play, he's doing something. Yep. You know, he's never just locked up in the way that you know, it feels like that's what happens with rushers. Like half the snaps is, you know, you try outside, oh, he stuffs you. Maybe you got like a, a secondary, you, you try something else and it doesn't quite work out. Jared Verse is a really good player. I think his age kind of gets blown up a little bit. He's still only 23. He's incredibly productive. He does seem like he could be a monster, like total monster, like all pro type guy if things work out. And there is some value there. Um, he wouldn't be a bad pick for sure. To me, Joe Walt is just... You you might just have like a, one of the three best left tackles in the NFL for the next couple decades. Also on Garrett Bowles, George Payton today said uh, Garrett still moves like he's twenty five years old, which I think he's kind well, of rookie year. <laughs> he's right, exactly. Like he's a rookie since he was still in college. Yeah, I, I wonder how that factors in because Garrett. I mean, he's he he's got to be thirty one now. Yeah, he's a little older. Yeah, he's thirty one now. But it is interesting that he came into the league so late. Um, I don't know how that affects you. you. Like, do you, if you come into the league at 25 instead of 21, do you now play to 36 instead of playing to 32? Like, I don't know how this the, the math works there, you know? Yeah, I don't know because he took – he won his mission. I don't know if it was one or two years, but yeah, I think he was away from football. So I don't know if that – adds longevity he's not like some of these other guys where they've been playing football all over 24 like, yeah he took a little bit of a break so maybe uh it doesn't affect him as much he's just a little bit older but the wear and tear from football wasn't the same yeah i think that's what it is mm -hmm. and, and taking a year off from that and like recovering from what's happened already is probably a good idea yeah. um also his mission was in colorado springs which i didn't realize I thought he went up. No. Really? I mean, it says instead of playing college football straight out of high school, Bulls embarked on LDS church mission in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I thought he went somewhere. That's right around the corner. I know. It's kind of, kind of strange. Oh, yeah. Because he's been like Utah, Colorado Springs, like Denver. Like it's, it's really, it's a little bubble right there. Yeah. Um, but final, final pick here in this bracket. Like I said, I've got all... You've got verse, uh, but you guys can all vote in this poll because you guys get to decide. Just like when we said Michael Penick should move on, but you guys decided Brock Bauer should. Um, looks like we've got one super chat here, Yaha, uh, Yaya. Yeah. I got stuck between Yaya and Yahir. Uh, oh, boy. That comes in from, does that say Ivory Hotline? Correct. Okay. Uh, hey, y'all. Turning 24 today. Oh, happy birthday. Uh, sick to see the Jersey News. Todd. Senior at Sac State. Yes, sir. Seniors up. Wow, Seniors my up, eyes baby. Are bad. Let's wow. go. Wow, Sac State. All the guy. way. Happy birthday, my man. Wow. Happy birthday. Smart man, I can already tell. Todd wasn't going to say happy birthday until he found out he's from Sac State. Uh, <laughs> cool, cool. You got happy birthday. Uh, no, it's all love. Sac Town, baby. All right. That's going to do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. See what Zach get. What did he say? He was, he was mixing tonight. Mm -hmm. He's going to a mixer tonight. Hopefully, he'll have more information for us tomorrow. Some billionaires. Just going to get crazy. Just go mixing with some billionaires. Why not? <laughs> Okay, uh, appreciate you guys for listening. Make sure you give us a thumbs up on the way out. Five star reviews wherever you listen. And even if you want to like make accounts, places you don't listen, we really appreciate that. Share with your friends, all those sorts of things. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Yo, silly like the mayor. 